Hello, Karl Marx here, and before we get started, I just wanted you to know that I'm pretty disappointed in the fact that you all just let communism die like that. You guys did me so dirty, it's insane. Anyways, I was born in Prussia in May of 1818 to Heinrich and Henrietta Marx. I was one of nine, so life was never boring, and when I was six, I was baptized Christian. Elementary school was okay. I was an average student taught at home until I was 12 when I began studying at a Jesuit high school. When the time came to go to college, I furthered my studies at the University of Bonn where I was an active student, in and out of the classroom if you know what I mean. After a few run-ins due to activities that I now know were inappropriate, I transferred to the University of Berlin and became a more dedicated student. There in Berlin, I studied law and philosophy. That was probably the start of my political career, as during this time I'd become involved with a politically radical group known as the Young Hegelians, who criticized political and religious establishments. I began to see the world in a different lens, and in the year of 1836, I made a choice that would change my life forever. I became engaged to the love of my life, Jenny Von Westvalen. She was four years my senior and of a higher class, but none of that mattered. We were young and in love. Unfortunately, my father wasn't supportive. My choice in wife, along with my new radical ideas, drove him mad. I paid no mind to his complaints of my demons and continued to live my life. I received my doctorate, became a journalist, married Jenny, and began our new life in Paris. Paris was where I would meet one of my closest confidants, Friedrich Engels. We became lifelong friends, shared similar ideals. I was soon expelled from France for my ties to a radical group, later known as the Communist League. Belgium became my new home. It was in Belgium that I would first be introduced to socialism. While there, I wrote on the topic of theory on historical materialism and titled it The German Ideology, which wouldn't be published until after my death, by the way. beginning of 1846, I founded a communist correspondence committee in an attempt to link socialists from around Europe. Inspired, the Communist League was formed, and then in 1847, my best friend Engels and I were asked to create the principles that the League would abide by, or our manifesto. The Communist Manifesto, as our work is now commonly known as, was published in 1848, and shortly after, in 1849, I was expelled from Belgium. I went to France, anticipating a socialist revolution there, but was shocked to be deported from there as well. I don't think anybody else was surprised. Prussia refused to renaturalize me, so I had no choice but to move to London, where I remained, and remained until my death. In London, I continued my work as a journalist, alongside running a new headquarters for the Communist League. I was never too financially stable, but my good old pal Friedrich helped to support me throughout my life. I found that I became increasingly focused on capitalism and economic theory, and in 1867 I took a leap and published the first volume of Das Kapital. The rest of my life was dedicated to writing and revising manuscripts for additional volumes which I would never complete. The remaining two volumes were assembled and published posthumously by Engels. Sadly, I died of pleurisy in London on March 14, 1883 at age 64. While my OG grave had, not, had only a nondescript stone, the Communist Party of Great Britain erected a large tombstone including a bust of my devilishly handsome face in 1954. The stone is etched with the last line of the Communist Manifesto, Workers of All Lands Unite, as well as a quote from the Theses on Feuerbach. And, well, it's the story of my life. Thanks for watching. Marxism is a method of socio-economic analysis that frames capitalism through a paradigm of exploitation and analyzes class relation and social conflict using a materialist interpretation of historical development and also takes a dialectal view of social transformation. A 
According to Marxian theory, class conflict arises in capitalist societies due to contradictions between the material interests of the oppressed proletariat, a class of wage laborers employed by the bourgeoisie to produce goods and services, and the bourgeoisie themselves, the ruling class that own the means of production and extract their wealth through the appropriation of the surplus product produced by the proletariat. How relevant is Marx today, some question. Some see Marxism as a central tool that has emerged from the understanding for the present-day environmental, political, and environmental crisis. Some Marxists point to our revolution or a financial crisis as the ultimate benchmark for social change. We must wait for either apparently a throwout of the entire system or some grand gesture before any meaningful change is possible. The fact is that many movements waste political energy and fail. So supporting badly designed movements has the effect of elevating structural barriers over free will and beliefs that change can simply depend on a crisis.